evening. Uh, I'm Saeed Choudhury. I'm the Associate Dean for Research Data Management at the Sheridan Libraries at Johns Hopkins. I'm joined by Mark Patton, who's one of our software developers. Uh, one of our other software developers, John Abrahams, is in the audience as well. And we're here to talk about a project that's being funded by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation called a Framework for Annotation and Interoperability. Uh, I'll be giving you an overview of the project and a description of what we're trying to do, and then Mark will dive into some of the technological uh, aspects and details. Uh, so fundamentally, we are working, we've been working for many years with the Perseus Digital Library based at Tufts University. And at Hopkins, we've been dealing with materials that uh, come from the medieval and renaissance periods, the so manuscripts and early printed books, uh, and looking primarily at images uh, from those collections. And Perseus has spent uh, even many more years uh, looking at texts from the classical uh, period. And there, there are many reasons I really appreciated Gardner's talk. Uh, one of them was he showed screenshots from some of these manuscripts and early printed books. And there are notes and annotations everywhere. I, I think there may be billions or trillions or, or however many there are. Uh, many of them don't have anything to actually do with the content of the books. There are shopping lists, there are symbols, there are things of different orientations. Uh, I showed, we're here at AG assumptions, if we took this kind of approach or built this kind of you know, technology, how would that play with what you're doing now? Would it break it? Would it be seamless? Would it be easy if you made some modifications? And I think in this regard, uh, you know, the annotation, uh, all knowledge, levels of interoperability is really critical. Um, I, I believe the lowest level of interoperability is like they actively interfere with each other or something like that. So the response may be from another team that go ahead and do that, but we can't work with that. Uh, or it could be, this is seamless, this is great, let's just do this. So we'll keep that in mind. It's not a, a binary kind of view of interoperability. It's much more this tiered uh, or nuanced way if you want to think about it. So I, I couldn't do this without actually showing you some of, of the materials themselves because they're just uh, amazing. So what you're seeing here is one of the early printed books in something we call the Archaeology of Reading. Uh, this is by somebody named Livy. Uh, you can see that on this screen, you can already see some of the types of annotations and notes that are uh, in the documents themselves physically, how we've started to transcribe them and build a schema around them so that you can display them, you can search them, uh, and so on. That in itself was helpful and useful to the scholars that do this particular kind of work. But even they have said, well, we know there are relevant references and resources in the Perseus Digital Library. And we would like to be able to get to those in some seamless and, and you know, in a sort of a, um, a comprehensive way. So this is a document about that particular Livy book that I just showed you in our Archaeology of Reading project, but this is coming out of the Perseus Digital Library. Uh, but even beyond just the reference to knowing that the same kind of document exists, we want to be able to take people to the exact paragraphs, right, the particular locations of those documents and align them. And we want to be able to do that even if you can't read Latin. I mean, I can't read Latin, and I don't think I will anytime soon. Um, and many of the students, of course, that are in, even in these classes, even if you're a classicist, you know, in your early stages of your career, you may not have the, these sort of language skills to do that on your own. So a text alignment or a language translation is a different kind of annotation from what we're looking at it. Uh, and to be able to do that in a more granular way, so that's a particular aspect. Uh, or a particular portion of, of the section that you're looking at. And also even things like tree banks. So there's additional scaffolding that could be useful for people to understand what they're looking at. Um, so in addition to seeing this, the translation, the alignment, you might see how the grammar is sort of laid out, how it's broken out. Uh, how do you work with those uh, as annotations is one of the things we'll, we'll be looking at. We're looking at doing this kind of work uh, through October of this year, because in November, uh, one of the protocols that Mark will talk about is the IIIF, or the International Image Interoperability Framework. I think that's right. Uh, they have their working group meeting in November, so we're hoping to be able to show them some of the work we've done uh, at that meeting. But then in the second year of the grant, which will basically run from November through next September, We'd like to start looking at these other kinds of annotations, for example, geospatial content. So there are a lot of references to places, uh, you know, names of cities or historical uh, monuments, things of that nature. And Perseus has very nice tools. And actually, I think Pelagios is in the room, maybe. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, so Pelagios is one of the groups we're hoping to work with uh, as well to make this kind of thing happen. 
Uh, and as you might imagine, again, this is basically providing people much more scaffolding and understanding uh, about what, what you're looking at in, in addition to just reading it on the screen. I will uh, turn it over to Mark, who will give you a little bit of overview of the technology and the approach that, that we're taking. Hi, I'm going to uh, talk. I'm going to talk briefly about the uh, uh, design approach we're taking. This is still sort of tentative. We're just getting started with the design, so bear that in mind. We, as I mentioned, we have two main partners on the project, uh, JHU and Perseus. JHU has a lot of familiarity with uh, sort of image-based objects, manuscripts, printed books online folios pre presented together with metadata about them, et cetera. Uh, Perseus is, really has this text focused, as I just mentioned, with these very sophisticated uh, reading environments. So one of the things we're trying to get out of this project is trying to bring them together uh, and see what we can do in terms of annotation. So these, uh, these two... Uh, these two partners have their own infrastructure, they have their own collections, they have their own different focuses, but fundamentally they're trying to do the same thing. They have a reading environment and the, uh, a collection, intera uh, a user interacts with a collection with it. Uh, and then you can view the data in these, in these collections as annotations. As Said mentioned, all the different types, you can look at a folio, you have a transcription of the folio, the transcription's an annotation. The translation of the transcriptions and annotation, the part of speech tagging's annotation, the alignment to some textual variant can be an annotation, uh, et, et cetera, et cetera. So annotation is an interesting lens to think about bringing everything everything together and unifying it. So, <coughs> how can we think about doing that? Well, we want to leverage the W3C's web annotation data model. This is a nice fit because these resources we're talking about are already, already on the web. They have URIs. We can use the web annotation vocabulary and we can make new statements about them in a new context. Uh, it's extensible if we find uh, some things don't quite meet our, meet our needs. For example, with text alignment, we can extend it uh, and add more information as needed. Uh, we're also probably going to look at the web annotation protocol, which is based on the linked data platform, which J2 at least is very familiar with. It may or may not be useful. We'll have to see. Uh, the one sort of big missing piece that we haven't really, we've just started talking about is thinking about discovery, is in this reading environment, how do you discover these annotations that we've put together in this shared infrastructure? How do we know what's relevant? And that's a crucial piece we still have to really think about and people ha have ideas we'd like to talk to you. Uh, so I think I will spare you a detailed description of all these different acronyms on the page, uh, but uh, I think we are happy to talk about them and uh, do any demonstrations if you come and talk to us later. So just end with some uh, acknowledgments. Obviously, the, the foundation's generous funding is really important. Um, the Christine de Pizan Digital Scriptorium actually has given some of the content that we put into what we now call the Digital Library of Medieval Manuscripts, and there's a, a link there. And then uh, the projects that came to the workshop, and we're very grateful for their time. And, and also Rob Sanderson, um, who wasn't representing a project per se, but is just a really smart and nice person. So <laughs> thanks to Rob. And if we have time, we'd be happy to take questions. Thank you. No questions. Wait, you want to step up to the mic? Yeah. yeah. No, no, you go, you go. Okay. Ahead. Thanks for the, uh, the presentation, guys. Sure. So obviously, an annotation encountering that changes the reading experience with a piece of text. And one of the first things and main utilities that come to mind is adding meaning or context to facilitate understanding. So one thing that I think about is when you're reading a, a Shakespeare book in middle school or high school, and those footnotes can be really, really important to clarify words or right. phrases that we wouldn't understand. Um, so with the impact it has on the reading experience, 
how would you consider or distinguish between annotations that provide additional context and understanding versus annotations that provide analysis and go deeper into something beyond just maybe what the author themselves intended right. um, and like what is an appropriate place or time to expose that annotation to a reader, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think that makes a lot of sense. Those are good questions, and we don't have really well-formed answers, to be honest. I think, again, that has implications on discovery, too, right? Are you discovering something that's contextual or something that's you know, a comment particularly about the author? From a technical perspective, they may not be terribly different, but I think from a user experience, they're very different. We also I think this is fair to say. Hopkins does not have a lot of tremendous UI expertise. Um, so if anyone would love to work with us on that, we'd be very thrilled because I think there's lots of user interface implications for this too, right? How those get presented or how they're labeled or how they get exposed. Um, those are really important questions, I think. Yeah, you know, that, that, that's, that's the sort of thing that we need. We would we have to talk to scholars and we just have to get detailed use cases about and because we, we don't understand all of that. We need to work with someone who can, you know, give us the background, tell, tell us, what the infrastructure needs to accommodate. Hi, Elton Barker, Pelagios. In fact, you probably just answered my question, which was you've talked about users. I was wondering which users are you talking about and what role are they playing within this in this project, because I understand you're at kind yeah. of a planning stage, yeah. and um, you're, th you're thinking about the design things. I'm just wondering um, um, what kind of user communities will you be drawing upon, and mm -hmm. to what extent will they be helping you in this design process? Right. Yeah, and, and I think one thing we should mention is with previous projects like this, where we've, in fact, gotten funding from <coughs> the Allen Foundation, we've taken a similar approach, where hopefully if we get the design good enough and the prototype good enough that it's not rigid and it's fixed, we can make changes you know, once we get feedback. Um, Mark is a computer scientist and I'm an engineer, so we know nothing about this content, which is kind of exhilarating in some way, but also <laughs> very nerve-wracking in another. We're very fortunate at Hopkins that the people who have been driving these projects are scholars. So we, we have a medievalist who led the Ramon de la Rose. We have uh, actually, not at Hopkins, Tony Grafton Princeton is the lead for archaeology reading. So we're very much working with the scholars from day one. Uh, another thing I will say is that there's an educational component to this grant. So th there's someone at Furman named, you may know her, Chiara Palladino, who is teaching courses already using some of these kinds of capability tools and Pelagios' tools. So we'll want that feedback throughout the course of the project. But because it is a demonstration, we assume at the end of this, people are going to poke holes on it, and, and that's great. We, we actually want that. Additional user communities would be, would be very good for get, helping us get more requirements on the data models and the technologies. Hey, a round of applause.